Hello everyone, hope everyone is fine and doing good. So what is update? Well update is this is gonna be the 8th video of uh, kinematics video lecture series. In this video we are going to discuss the equation of motion of a moving object along a straight line. And we will see the different cases of uh, the motion of an object. And at last we will see the special case of uh, the motion that is the uniformly accelerated motion. And also we will be driving the equation of motion for that. So let's get started. To describe the motion of any moving object, uh, we have uh, four basic parameters. These are position, velocity, acceleration and time. But at a time we require only two to have a relation between them so that uh, by using that particular relation we can determine all the four parameters. So now let's take a look on this. We have uh, x, v, a and t. Now, if we require only two parameters at a time, then it can be done in six ways, right? So for this, I will take the combination of uh, two out of these four. And if we open it like this, so this is uh, four, three, two, and it is two into two. So that will give me six relations between all these four parameters. Now, let's take a look on uh, these. What are, what are these? So this is xt, at and vt and we can have xa, xv and av. Now let's take a look on each and every relation with the help of the example we are going to understand each and every relation in detail. Before taking the examples for each and every relations over here I just want to take a look on first three relations so let's write down them here again so it is uh, xt this is vt and here it is at i'm calling uh, this as uh, zero order relation in x and t why i'm calling uh, this as a zero order relation because it is uh, just only the relation between x and t it doesn't have any time derivative of x with respect to time t so that's why i'm calling this as zero order relation now if you take a look on this we already know that velocity can be written as first order time derivative of x with respect to time t so that's why i'm calling this as first order relation in x and t and if you take a look on this, we can write down this as acceleration is equal to dv by dt. Further, it can be written as second order time derivative of x with respect to time t. So that's why I'm calling this as second order relation. Okay. Now, this is about uh, the ordering of uh, xt, vt and at relations. Now let's take a look on examples for each and every relations over here. Let's take x is equal to kt, v is equal to kt and acceleration is also equal to kt where k is the constant and t is the time. Basically what I have done over here, I have just taken the linear function of time t. It is not necessary that you should take the same function of time t. You can take any function which comes in your mind. It can be in higher power of time t and it can be the function like uh, trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, exponential functions and so on. But for this moment, uh, let's stick to this uh, linear function. So now take a look on uh, this. As we can see, this is the position time relation and it has uh, zero order. Right. If I want to find out uh, the expression for velocity, then I should need to change the order of this equation from 0 to order 1. And we know that for this, we need to take the derivative of uh, this x with respect to time t. Okay. So, if I do this, then I will obtain dx by dt is equal to k and this is nothing but the velocity of the moving object. So this is what uh, the velocity which uh, comes out to be a constant quantity. And further, if I want to know the acceleration of the moving object, then 
I can take derivative of this with respect to the time and it comes out to be zero. So this is what this is the case of uniform motion right now let's take a look on this velocity is equal to kt here we have uh, v equal to kt and uh, i can write down this as dx over dt is equal to kt and i can write down this dx as kt into dt where this dx is the differential element of x and dt is the differential element of time t when we talk about the differential element we simply mean by the value which is nearly equal to zero that is not exactly equal to zero now to understand it let's take a very simple example over here suppose uh, this is any particle which is moving with the speed v1 there are two points point a and b and the locations are x1 and x2 respectively suppose uh, this is at time t1 this is at time t2 and let's assume x is the distance between these two points so from uh, this figure i can write down x is equal to x2 minus x1 now what i want to do next i just want to divide this entire length x into small pieces so that the width of each element is dx so what is this dx basically this is the differential element now if it is the differential element then the number of uh, such pieces are going to be infinite right now what i want to do next i want to represent uh, this x in terms of differential element so for this i should have the value of this x1 and x2 and then take uh, the summation over this differential element dx now to do this we have a mathematical tool this is called the integration okay now in language of integration what i can say x is equal to the summation over differential element dx within range x1 and x2 x1 is something we call the lower limit and x2 is called the upper limit and the whole formula this whole formula is nothing but this is called the definite integral what is called the definite integral because we have some limit over here okay so this is about uh, the definite integral now let's take a general formula for the definite integral of a polynomial function the general formula of a definite integral for a polynomial function is limit range from x1 to x2 x power n dx is equal to x power n plus 1 upon n plus 1 and of course the limits are here this is x1 and x2 so this formula is applicable for all the values of n except n is equal to minus 1 now what is the formula for this condition n equal to minus 1 well for this we have x1 x2 1 over x into dx that is equal to logarithmic of x and these are the limits okay so this is uh, the general formula of definite integral for a polynomial function now we have uh, some other formulas for different functions let's take here this is trigonometric function this is sine x dx within range x1 to x2 so it is going to be minus cos x within range x1 x2 and for uh, cosine function we have uh, plus sine x over here and this is limit range x1 to x2 and for uh, exponential function suppose it is e power n x into dx it is 
e power n x upon n and the limit range is x1 and x2 and we have uh, some other formulas for different functions so we will discuss all of uh, these in later videos so this is enough for uh, the integration formulas for this moment now let's come to this point over here here we have uh, dx is equal to kt into dt and if i take uh, the integration that ranges from x1 and x2 for this uh, differential element dx that will give me the distance between the points a and b and i can do the same thing on the right hand side for uh, differential element dt so it is uh, this integration ranges from t1 to t2 and it is kt into dt now i can write down uh, the result of this integration directly so it is what it is uh, x2 minus x1 and it is half k t2 square minus t1 square okay so this is what uh, this is the position time relation now if i take uh, time derivative of this expression over here let's do it here so i will obtain dv by dt is equal to k and we already know that this is nothing but the instantaneous acceleration so here i can say that acceleration comes out to be a constant quantity right so what is this this is the uniformly accelerated motion okay we will talk about uh, this particular case in detail so this is all about uh, this particular relation over here now let's take a look on this third relation that is acceleration time relation now we have uh, a equal to kt and uh, from this expression i want to find out the expression of velocity and time so i can write down this acceleration as dv over dt is equal to kt and if i rearrange it then i can write down this as dv equal to kt into dt let's take uh, the integration of uh, differential elements within their proper range so it ranges from u to v and it is t1 to t2 kt into dt what is this uh, u and v u is the initial speed and v is the final speed right so if i perform this integration over here then i can write down this as v minus u is equal to k upon 2 t2 square minus t1 square okay so this is what uh, the velocity time relation let's uh, rearrange the term v equal to u plus k upon 2 t 2 square minus t 1 square right so this is what uh, the velocity time relation now from this i can find out uh, the displacement or we can say the position time relation okay so for this what uh, i would be needed i will replace this velocity term by its uh, derivative form right so it can be written as uh, dx by dt is equal to u plus k upon 2 t2 square minus t1 square now if i rearrange the term this is uh, dx is equal to u dt plus k upon 2 t2 square minus t1 square into dt okay now what i want to do next i should introduce uh, the integration method again right because now we have uh, the differentials dx and dt so let's uh, do the integration within their proper range so it ranges from uh, x1 to x2 it is from t1 to t2 and it is from t1 to t2 now after uh, performing uh, this integration over here then it will give me x2 minus x1 it is u t2 minus t1 plus it will give me k upon 2 t2 
टी टू पावर क्यूब माइनस टी वन पावर क्यूब डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री राइट सो इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस थ्री विद दिस टू इट विल गिव मी सिक्स इन द डिनोमिनेटर राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट द डिस्प्लेसमेंट टाइम रिलेशन ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द फर्स्ट थ्री रिलेशंस नाउ लेट्स टेक अ लुक ऑन दीज थ्री रिलेशंस ओवर हियर नाउ वी हैव एक्स वी एक्स ए एंड ए वी रिलेशन now let's take uh, one example for each relations over here so let's take uh, x is equal to kv x is equal to ka and a is equal to kv so you can notice uh, the relations are linear function in v in a and in v again now let's take a look on this so here i can write down this x equal to k and v is dx over dt and if i rearrange the term then i can write down this as 1 over x into dx and it is 1 over k into dt right now d dx and dt are the differentials now i can apply integration methods with proper range of integration so it is from x1 to x2 and it is from t1 to t2 after applying uh, the integration method we can solve it and if we solve it then we already know that it can be written as log x2 upon x1 and it is what it is 1 over k t2 minus t1 now let's take this t2 minus t1 is delta t so it can be written as delta t over k and here it is uh, logarithmic of uh, x2 upon x1 now i can convert uh, this logarithmic function into exponential function so i can write down this as uh, x2 upon x1 it is exponential delta t over k and finally we obtain x2 is equal to x1 exponential delta t by k so this is the relation of uh, position and time now it is uh, not a very simple motion because we have uh, seen here this is the exponential function in time t so this is about uh, x v relation now let's take a look on x a relation over here now here we have x equal to k a and uh, i can write down this a as uh, dv by dt but here there is a problem problem is uh, the function of uh, the quantity that should match with the differential right now in order to change this what we can do we can multiply this with v and divide it with v now in the next step what i can do i can write down this as dv over dt this is v and this v can be written as dx over dt right so this uh, dt will cancel out and i will be having x is equal to k v dv over dx so now let's rearrange the term over here so this is x into dx and it is k v dv now we have the differential and uh, i will do the integration within range x1 to x2 and here it is from u to v if i perform this integration then i obtain it is uh, x2 minus x1 basically it is what it is the square over here and it is divided by 2 and here i will be getting k v square minus u square upon 2 right and on rearranging the term i will be having x2 square minus x1 square is equal to k v square minus u square so this is the relation between position and velocity right now let's take a look on uh, the third equation which is uh, acceleration is equal to kv now what i can do i can write down this acceleration as dv over dt over here and that is equal to kv 
Now if I rearrange the term then I can write down this as 1 over v into dv and it is k into dt right now let's apply the method of integration within proper range so it ranges from u to v and it is from t1 to t2 so after performing this uh, integration then i have logarithmic of v upon u and it is equal to k t2 minus t1 so it can be written as v equal to u exponential k into delta t where i have substituted uh, delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 now we can have uh, over here we can have the relation like v is equal to kx right and here i can have the relation a is equal to kx and here i can have the relation v is equal to ka now this is the question for the quiz what is the question if we consider these three equations then you have to find out the equations of motion for this particular case so that's all for today and if you have any doubt then you can do the comment in the comment box then i will definitely i will definitely fly back to you so that's all for today so until then stay connected and keep watching for further updates